Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome everybody to the uh, regular Sunday night traditional service at Christ Fellowship with Pastor Gary Miller. And we have some good uh, songs, some hymns that we're going to sing tonight. And we're going to start off with uh, number 43. The, the numbers on the board are correct. Uh, number 43, Pauline, it's good to see you. Uh, this is my father's world. for my uh, sponsee and better way to reach the 30-day mark. I think he's on 26. That's Greg. Greg. That's Greg. And um, pray for all the conflict in the world to smooth out just a little bit so we can breathe. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next. Uh, Jesse and then Jeanette. I want to pray for my son, David, who uh, has a Court hearing Friday. Okay, Jeanette. Yes, I want to pray for comfort for Crino and all his family um, before the death of his brother Enrique. We just found out this weekend. Mm. And uh, I also need to pray for Anthony and all the youth who need to be recovered. Okay, right. absolutely. Rick, I want to pray for my daughter Carla. You know, she was hit by a car on the campus at Ohio State. Right. And boy, she has really uh, gone through a lot of pain and agony and trying to work and teach. And uh, I just hope she gets straightened out. She really can't sleep on her right side. Or, you know, really been a, been a, been a mess. Okay, Pastor. Yes, David. Richard, just continue strength for dialysis. It's five days a week. So you're not in the morning to five in the afternoon. Richard, I'm, I'm sorry, I may have forgotten. Who is Richard again? Is he related to you? No. Okay. 
So he's a friend of yours, yeah. Richard. Okay, Richard. Okay, so Allison. Yes. Vitaly. Well, my relationship with Kathleen and. Your what? Well, our relationship, uh, my relationship with Kathleen and that uh, you know, everything goes smoothly and we put God first in our relationship. Okay. Kathleen, your. My fiance. Your fiance. Well, that was fast, Vitaly. We had lunch the other day. You stay out when of did you get fia- When did you get fiance? Actually, on New Year's Eve. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, Andrew. How are you doing? Hi, I'd like to pray for my, my friend, uh, George Leon. He's, uh, he's waiting for his heart to get better, to get stronger, so he can have surgery. He had a heart attack about uh, two months ago, and uh, he's not talking to us. Uh, okay. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, we have uh, many prayers today. You know all the prayers we know, and I'm sure there are unspoken prayers. There are, there are prayers and concerns in people's hearts. Uh, not been voiced and have been spoken and we ask you to consider all those prayers we know you will Lord uh, we John is asking for gainful employment uh, he loves you Lord he's always studying your word he's always trying to yes. tell your word and tell about you know salvation to other people and he is having uh, serious financial difficulties now and and he's a willing worker and he's a good worker and uh, we ask that you consider that and assist him and help him. Uh, obviously, it's always your will, but uh, and, and sometimes there's lessons to be learned and things like that. Uh, and uh, we rejoice in all the trials and tribulations. But he is looking for a job and employment, and, and consider that. And Jeff has a sponsee named uh, Greg, who's coming up on 30 days of being clean and sober. And we're praying for Greg and all the addicts out there. We're praying also for Anthony, Jeanette's son, and he's uh, yeah. he's in recovery, but he's within his first year and first few months, and it's difficult, and we're praying that he not be unduly tempted, and that he always turns to you, and that he con- continues to look at you, know, you Lord, uh, for help and assistance. Pray for David, Jesse's son, who's uh, going up for his sentencing, and we pray that the, the court has uh, leniency and gives him mercy. Yeah. And we pray for and we pray for uh, David's family. It's got to be tough on uh, Jesse and and Carmel and the family. And we pray for the family. Uh, uh, Jeanette asked for and we pray for Finio and his uh, entire family. His brother Enrique has passed away, and uh, and they uh, just found out about that. And we pray for. Uh, the entire family and Plinio's entire family, uh, they find peace. Uh, we pray for uh, uh, Carla, past Carrie and Dorothy's daughter, who was hit by a car uh, at Ohio State University and is in, 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 in a lot of pain. And uh, we pray that the pain subsides and that she is uh, medically well and she, she uh, doesn't have to suffer with the pain as a result of this car accident. We pray for Richard, who is David's friend, uh, who's going through dialysis, that that works out well. <coughs> better. We pray for Vitaly and mm. Kathleen, his fiance, that that relationship flourishes and, and is, is centered on you, Jesus. Centered, that relationship is centered on you uh, because we know if, if you're the central fact of that relationship, then that re- relationship will flourish. We pray for uh, uh, and Andy uh, has a friend, George Leon, who had a heart attack. He needs to go through surgery. He needs to get better from the heart attack. And we're praying for him getting well and the doctors being able to uh, look after him and, and be wise in how they, they, they treat him so that he can have his surgery. We pray for, uh, we pray for a revival in this nation. We pray for our country. Yeah. Pray for the president, pray for the Congress, pray for... Uh, uh, a lowering of the conflict in this country so that we yeah. unified yeah. and that the country uh, and that there is a revival and that we become a beacon of, uh, of 
of salvation, of your salvation for the rest of the world, Lord. And we, uh, we pray for the churches and the pastors, Pastor Rick here and uh, Mike Campbell at uh, Old Covenant Crest and all the other churches, the vineyards and, and all the other churches in the, uh, in the area that uh, are preaching the gospel. Bible-believing churches. We pray for them throughout this country and throughout the world. We ask for all this, this and pray for all this in your blessed Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next uh, hymn is on page 60. And, uh, and you'll have to excuse me if I sound like I have the sniffles or a little nasal. I have to come down from my cold. My, my three, I think my four-month-old grandson gave it to me. So it's a great cold. So it's my little grandson. <laughs> you know, if we had time, I'd show you pictures. But uh, in any event, I'm crazy about it. Seventh grandson. Okay, Be Thou My Vision, number 60.
dismay and sorrow all depart. How are you? Okay. Oh, I don't like them. How are you? Maybe I just want to know. Okay, folks, where our next song is on page 227. And after that, we'll be taking up our collection. <laughs> Okay, um, we're not going to do 228, we're doing 261, 261, Wonderful Words of Life, 261, and then we'll have our message for Pastor Kerry. Oh, we're 
spoken to me wonderful words of mine. Let me more of their beauty see wonderful words of mine. Words of life and beauty teach me faith and beauty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of mine. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed who gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, listen to the dark and call wonderful words of life. Also freely giving, moving us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctified forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. <coughs> Amen. And now our message from Pastor Terry Miller. Thank you, Rush. sure that most of you are not familiar with all those words but I love it anything that has to do with my master remember that scripture when Jesus showed up at the door and went to Lazarus I think it was in his home and the sister Lazarus sister said the master is here and called us for thee I believe he's here tonight. I believe he goes out through all these transmissions on these videos on YouTube. The master is here and calleth for thee. I want everyone who's listening to this message to listen to these words that Paul shared when he wrote this little letter in the New Testament called the book of Titus. T-I-T-U-S. And we're going to begin reading tonight. If I can get my iPad, here we go. Chapter 2, verse 11 in the book of Titus. As I was thinking about all that we've been sharing about our life in Christ and that Christ is all we need and Christ in us our hope of glory and all these messages during the Christmas season that I've referred to, that you'll find listed in our YouTube section, Pastor Kerry's Sermons. But I noticed that one that uh, I was sharing with Daniel before the service tonight, we had more views than any other message. And you know what it was? Christ is all I need. And he had about six or eight exclamation points after that title. And it must have been that punctuation, repetitious punctuation, 
of those exclamation points that caught the attention of some folks and caused them to watch that message. And I thought, you know, people are headline readers. You look to see what's in the headlines. Every section of the newspaper, if you're a newspaper fan. I used to get uh, USA Today when I wrote a, a lot going to revivals on the plane and I would stop by the counter where the newspapers were and I'd get a USA Today newspaper on the way home on Monday when I'd be re leaving for, for an eight day revival, rejoicing in what the Lord had allowed us to experience. And I'd get that newspaper paper so I could catch up on the news worldwide. It was abbreviated, as you know, into small paragraphs. And I would get that USA Today, because I didn't have time to read all the newspapers from everywhere. But I would faithfully get that in USA Today and read it before I got home. You know, I saw Billy Graham one night get up with a newspaper in his hand, and I thought, now, that's strange, a man who preaches nothing but the Bible. But it was in a revival meeting in the Will Rogers Coliseum in Fort Worth, Texas. He was in a month long, one month, every night, a month long crusade in that Coliseum. My wife and I were privileged to go for a week. We left college with my special permission at Howard Payne College in Brownwood, Texas, which is about 120 or 30 miles south of Fort Worth. And we came up there because we were interested in what was happening. And when he said, you wonder why I read this newspaper, he said, I like to keep up with what's happening in the world to see if what I'm preaching tonight is essential. I never forgot that. And I want you to know that what we're reading tonight is essential to our understanding of what God has done, what he wants to do in us and through us, as you've heard me say so many times in recent nights. In us, with us, and through us. But it's all by grace. Amen? Amen. That means God's riches at Christ's expense. We didn't deserve it. We'll never be able to deserve it. For we all sinned and came short of the glory of God, Paul said. Once we realize we're sinners, it's too late. We're already declared guilty. Once we reach the age of accountability and we stand before a righteous God who judges all men justly, we realize that we're accountable to him above all. Now, you know, I've said many times through the years I've been preaching, more years than I want to admit because you'll know how old I am. Most of you don't anyway. But I've said many times, I want to die preaching. When God's finished with me, he can just take me home. But the one thing I want to know is that I was faithful to his word and that I have tried to the best of my ability and understanding to trust him in all that we've shared because I believe his word is true. I really believe it. Amen. Now friend, I want to say I don't always behave it and you don't either. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how many times you rededicated your life. Sometimes I rededicate mine several times a day. <laughs> I don't wait for a revival meeting. I don't wait till next Sunday when the pastor's preaching you know, I want my experience to be up to date. Amen? Amen. 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 As the old boy said, that's all I was in it. All right? Now, I read these words in the King James I've memorized through the years. But the great, this is the King James, but the grace of God that appears to all men
teaches us something. Let's read it in verse 11. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Bringing salvation. Now, how many of us know the old song? We've heard it, some of us, all of our lives. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Now what brought the salvation? If we didn't deserve it, we never will. We couldn't if we wanted to, because it's too late by the time we realize we're sinners. If salvation uh, was up to us, if we had to work it out by our own good works, we'd just be, as my grandfather said, up a creek without a paddle. Amen? Amen. <laughs> that's, that's a sad predicament to be in, up a creek without a paddle. I guess if you didn't have any uh, water running and uh, no downhill motivation, you'd just sit still. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go anywhere. I think that's the way a lot of people are. They, they're just sitting there, not going anywhere. But you know something? God wants to take us where he wants us to go. God wants to use us the way he has planned. Because I read, I read in this now in the New Living Translation. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. Oh boy. Does that sound familiar? Turning. See, that's, that's repentance. When we turn from the way we're going, what we're doing, from our way to God's way. That's repentance. The Bible said it's repent or perish. Repent or perish. As the old preachers used to preach years ago, it's turn or burn. Turn or burn. Just two choices. There's no neutral. There's an old song that says, neutral you cannot be. One day my heart will be asking, what will he do with me? Now, so we will realize that this instruction in God's word helps us to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. Boy, if that doesn't describe America, I don't know. Godless living. Oh boy. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. Three things. Wisdom, that comes from God, according to James. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives all men justly, <laughs> liberally, willingly. He's ready when you're ready to receive it. When I'm ready to receive it, he's ready to give it. Now, we're to live righteously after the wisdom and righteousness and devotion to God. We have a slogan around here our pastor has made popular in our church. We're to develop fully devoted disciples for Jesus. Fully devoted disciples. And I thought as I studied for this message tonight, and I read this in the Living Translation, I bet that's where they got it. Because <laughs> it doesn't say it that way in the King James, in the authorized version. But I love that text. Now, we're to become fully devoted to the Lord Jesus. Now, why is that? Because we're looking for something that's on the way. While we look, are you looking, Mike? We look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, now he amplifies it. He's not only our Savior, he's a great God, the one and only. Our great God and Savior, God is our Savior, we're not our Savior. Now keep your mind on grace now. God's riches, grace. 
By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, Paul says in Ephesians. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That means we don't have anything to brag about. Absolutely. Nothing. There's an old song I love. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I claim. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So it's only through his blood that we are declared righteous. We're not only declared righteous, but we have grace to help us become more righteous every day. Amen. You know, John Glenn had a Bless his heart. He's up there re rejoicing in it tonight. He is. Yeah, he used to. He used to say, "I'm not sinless yet, but I sin less." Yeah, that's what he said. You remember? I do. You know, I never heard anybody say that until I heard him say it. Really? No, I never had. Okay. And I said less. Not sinless, but I said less. Can we say that every day? See, that's what James is concerned about here. I mean, uh, Paul, when he writes in the book of James to these believers, that we should live in this evil world with wisdom and righteousness and devotion to God. How devoted are you to God tonight? Are you here tonight because of your devotion to Him? I was thinking of a, an old popular song of years ago. Hopelessly devoted to you. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was saying to my wife every morning. I'm hopelessly devoted to you. You know, you know the devil has a counterfeit in the flesh for everything that God has in the spirit, you know? Yeah, really. I had to learn that. So I have to be hopelessly devoted to Jesus. Amen. See, I'm part of the bride of Christ. Now you think about it. The church is the bride of Christ. We're to be, we're to, we're to love Christ as Christ loved the church. We're to love one another as God loved us. How in the world is that possible? Only by grace. You know, I've heard people say, I never will love that guy. I know, I know what the Bible teaches, but I don't care. Boy, don't ever say that. Don't ever say you don't care. You do care. You do care. You know why? Because he cares. It breaks God's heart. Now I've said this repeatedly in recent, recent weekends here. Do we want to follow the steps of our Lord who said, I do always those things which please my Father. Boy, I wish I could say that. Well, I hope I'm doing more to please him now than I was yesterday, or last week, or last month. Does your life testify before a lost and dying world of your love and devotion for Jesus? Now, you know what? We got, we got all kind of games going on tonight. The Heat are playing tonight, and boy, they're white hot right now. I mean, they're playing. They won a game last night, I'm telling you. Most impossible situation I've ever seen with less than a minute. And they were down nine points and they won the game by one point. And some of you are watching. I can see your face. <laughs> see that? We're not all perfect yet. We watch ball. Oh, my goodness. All that worldly stuff. You know, I appreciate what uh, Billy Graham's son said on Twitter. I look at that once in a while. I read it today. You know what he said on Twitter? Why don't we just leave these players alone? Let them play. And don't penalize the guys who work so hard for the victory of going to the Super Bowl. You know, live and let live. You know, because why? Because we're to love everybody. Old time religion makes me love everybody. We get so cotton picking legalistic. Oh, man. It just makes me, you know, we're like the Pharisees. Oh, 
Yeah. Gosh, and you know, you know how Jesus felt about the scribes and Pharisees, right? He called them whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. You ever see a whitewashed tomb? You know, we used to have decoration day out in the country in Missouri where they clean up the cemetery. Yeah. And they clean up the graves and whitewash the tombstones. Some of them, those old sandstone things, they got to where, you know, you couldn't read them. They whitewash them around the letter so you could read. See, I'm reading y'all bail. Now, y'all been where I've been. Yeah, let me tell you. You know, I'm proud of my country heritage. I'm proud that my mom and dad, as we say, Missouri grew up in the sticks. No inside plumbing, friend, no electricity. Read by lamplight. And they sang without a pieter, they used to call it. Where have I ever got that word, I'll never know. <laughs> I went down there to preach a revival, and one of, the, one of the men who ought to know better, my goodness gracious. We make fun of other people in their slang and their language. He said, we got a new piano player, can you I said, a what? I said, you mean a piano player? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know what happened? That piano player got saved during the revival. Wow. And, and her daughter got saved. And uh, six or eight others. And you know what he said? The third night of the revival, he said, you know, that's all the prospects we had. Everybody got saved. I said, good, I can preach to the church now and tell them what they need to hear. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All the prospects were saved. Every night I'd, I'd look around him and I'd say, anybody else here tonight that needs to be saved? No, he said, I think you got them all. <laughs> That's my first cousin. He was a pastor, my first cousin, yeah. And his dad and my dad were buddies. His daddy used to preach on horseback like my dad did. They'd ride horseback to those little quarter-time and half-time churches. One, one, one friend I had in, in college, back when we, we well, that was a, you know, not an unusual thing at all. He was pastoring, now listen to this, four quarter-time churches. And he'd go to a different church every month, and we'd have fifth Sunday singing on the months that had the fifth Sunday, you know, you had five Sundays, and they had fifth, fifth Sunday singing. And everybody would show up, and they'd, just, they'd tell them where, they, where it was going to be next month. And everybody would meet and bring their basket dinner. And I've seen the horses and the buggies pulled up <clears throat> and tied to a tree. And all the, <laughs> the tables, the homemade tables, set up out there with all those baskets. And I prayed I wouldn't get homemade boys because some of the fried chicken, you know, when it was, <laughs> when it was hot, you know, it it wouldn't, there was no refrigeration, you know. And you, you, forgive me, Lord. You gotta smell it before you ate it. <laughs> you get that potato salad been sitting out there for a while, you know. Boy, you can get sick. <laughs> I'm having fun tonight. Just leave me alone. Amen. You know, you know, friend. <laughs> you know, that's where I used to hear him sing, "Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace." I'm so glad I got to preach my grandfather's funeral. He was such a great guy. Never had a music lesson in his life, but boy, he could sing. Now, what am I saying? The grace of God made all that possible. It's only by God's grace that I'm here tonight. I can sure tell you that. You don't believe that? That's Daniel's dad. He was one of my doctors. He knows. I wish he'd come to see how good I'm doing. I'd like to just to stand up and show off in front of him. I remember when he came in my room one day over Harmony Healthcare, and he said, "How come you're not walking? How come you're not walking?" Yeah. Uh -huh.
So we're instructed. Now let's go back to verse 11. Verse 12, excuse me. Verse 12. We are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world. See? We're living in an evil world, whether we like it or not. We don't have a choice. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with great hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. Old song says, what a day that will be. I preached at funerals yesterday, Saturday afternoon at Art Van Orsdale. All the family, four girls and one boy, two grandsons, and all the other family members. There were only two other, three other ladies besides Doris and I who at that funeral service, by special request, that were not <coughs> members of that family. Now, beloved, I want you to—I want you to know something. The great privilege I had—they were seated. He had that chapel set up with two big couches, and I was at the center aisle on the carpet, and I had all the family on either my left or my right to preach to them and share Jesus with them. And I don't know how many other family members in that group we had there that really knew Jesus. But I would watch their expression as I always do when I preach. You know, people used to say to me, I never sit too close to you because you're reading my mind while you're preaching. <laughs> now, I don't say that to brag on me, but you know, they got the idea. I was watching their response to the truth. You know, you can, you can watch people's reaction to the Word of God and pretty well tell whether they're right with God or not. And I've seen people try to hide it, put their Bible up, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why they carried big Bibles, John. They carry those Bibles so they could put them up in front of their face, the preacher wouldn't be watching them. You know, I, I bet I just have to get loose a little once in a while, so just bear with me tonight now, okay? My son's liable to watch this sermon and he'll say, Dad, you know what he said? You take the cake. You, you take the cake, whatever that means. <laughs> I've heard it all my life. But you know, you know, I know that I know there's joy in heaven. Amen. Man, it's rejoicing time up there. Right. Woo! Man. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Oh boy. Paul said, I'm pressing on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How many of you are doing that tonight? Here's an old one for you. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane. That I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Hey, that's what it's all about, brother. See, Paul knew what he was saying to this young preacher. He wanted him to catch it. Whatever it was, he wanted him to get it. You know, I heard a fellow say one day, I walked into a church. They were singing and praising God. And I said, Lord, I'd like to catch some of that. He said, most churches I go into... Look at all those sad sack saints sitting around there. And he said, I said, Lord, please get me out of here before I catch what they are. 
You know, I wonder when people come in to our services, even in this chapel, when our little group meets, do they really know by the way we sing and the way we greet each other and the way we respond and say amen? You know there isn't anything in the Bible against saying amen and showing your emotion and your affection. My friend, listen. People call it, well, well, they just get so emotional up there. I'll tell you what, honey. Some of them will be so glad they made it, those doubters. They're going to be so glad they finally made it. And the Bible says their works will be burned, but they'll be saved as out of a fire by the skin of their teeth. Some people are just going to get there by the skin of their spiritual teeth. You know that? That's the truth. I don't want to go that way. I've read that so many times and preached from that hundreds of times in 1 Corinthians. He said, we build out of one or two kinds of material. Or one of three kinds of material. Gold, silver, or precious stone. That's the, that's the righteousness of the wood, hay, and the stubble. Now, wood, hay, and stubble are going to burn up in the fire test of judgment. Amen. But the gold, silver, and precious stone in our reward will just be purer than ever. I want my life to testify of the love that I have for my Lord. Now, listen. We're to do good. Oh, boy. We're to live wisely. Verse 5. To be pure, to work in our home. Now, where did we get that? Well, just a little further down in the chapter, he's talking about women. Women are supposed to be pure. See, this is part of the righteousness. Look at verse uh, 5 in, in chapter 2, verse 6. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely, and you yourselves must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. That everything you do reflect the integrity and the seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching cannot be criticized. Nobody's going to say, well, that preacher's afraid to tell us what we need to hear. He's afraid we might ask him to resign. <laughs> Remember I told you the other night about the, the annual call you know, they call you on an annual, on an annual basis. They reevaluate your work at the end of the year, whether you're going to come back or not. I notice some of these Methodist friends of mine. Every year they move. They move around. Now, beloved. He goes on to talk about slaves obeying their masters. And now, and then we get down to the verse we've been studying tonight. For the grace of God, the grace of God teaches us to die unto godliness and worldly lust and to live godly, righteously, and soberly in this present world. Now, let me show you something. He gave us his life, verse 14, chapter 2. To free us from every kind of sin. To cleanse us and to make us his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. Now when you get through the 12 step program, that's, that's where you need to be, friend. Fully committed to doing good deeds. What do we read? The last thing we read in the 12 step program is about the Good Samaritan. I bet I've heard that story read more times since I've been going to these meetings on Friday night than I had all, all the other years of my life put together. <laughs> yeah. Man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among the thieves. And they stripped him. They robbed him. They beat him, leaving him half dead. But a Samaritan, now Jews had no dealings with Samaritans normally. That's why Jesus told the story. See, my attitude towards folks changed 
folks of every color and every culture changed when Jesus came into my heart. You know why? Because the next part of that verse says, I have light in my soul for which long I had sought. See, the problem is most people aren't seeking that. They don't want their life to change. Uh -huh. They don't want to be any different. They like it just like it is. Don't bother me with that preacher. I don't want to hear about that. I didn't join your church to hear that. I just want to go to heaven when I die. Yeah, I love you, friends. I'm not mad at you. I'm just mad at the devil for peddling all those lies. Oh, my goodness. I'm just about to believe it. I said just about. I want to say it one more time. Dr. Lee says, and finally, brethren, but not immediately. <laughs> I never... I never get tired of that. Finally, but not immediately. Sometimes he'd preach 40 minutes after he said that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. You ask my wife if, I tell, if I'm exaggerating. Now, let's go back to verse 14. Why did Jesus die for us? Now, see, we talked about the provision of grace. This is the purpose of grace. He, did, he gave us this grace. Why? To cleanse us, to make us his very own people, Totally committed to doing good deeds. Now, you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when they stray. People say, Preacher, where did you get the authority to preach like that? Tell us that. You don't have any authority. I said, I have the authority. That's why I believe that a God called ministry. That's why if a man doesn't have divine authority and unction when he preaches, the word's not going to get any further than his lips. Amen. It's not going to penetrate the hearts of the people. It's not going to accomplish what God's word was intended to accomplish. It's like a two-edged sword piercing down even to the marrow of the bone. Now, if you've had a bone marrow test, they tell me there's nothing in the world like sticking a needle into the bone marrow. I'll take their word for it. I don't want to know. Let me read that again. Verse 15. You must teach these things. Paul's advising this young preacher. You must preach these things. Do you see anything wrong in the preaching that we have in a lot of our churches? You see why it's easier to just praise the Lord than it is to preach the truth? Mm. Right. Look what I'm saying now. Are we preaching to tickle the ears? You know, the Bible says in the last days, people will heap, heap to themselves around them teachers who love to have their ears tickled. Oh, you're such a wonderful preacher. I'm glad you don't preach all that hellfire damnation. People say, I quit going to that church because all they do is preach at you about something. Well, I grant you there's a way to do it. We're supposed to speak the truth in love. We're supposed to encourage one another, build one another up in faith. See, it's all in the, the, in the approach. You know, when I hear a guy fussing at folks, I say, he doesn't love them. I never preached a sermon in my life after I learned better. I, 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 my wife heard most of what I preached all her life. Friend, I want you to know that I always tell my people, when I wrote my article in my newsletter, I love you, beloved. I always started with one word, beloved. Beloved. Some of my preacher friends one day, we were sitting in pastor's conference. We were having lunch. And I say this to the glory of God, because I learned my lesson. And he said, you know, Kerry, I know why your people love you, because they know you love them.
you know, my mother used to say, son, you know why I'm whipping you, don't you? You know why I'm giving you this whipping? That's where she ever started. I, I, you know, I used to wish she'd just get it over with. Ah, that little lecture she gave me at the beginning, you know, I didn't need it. You know why I'm doing this, don't you? Because I love you. And I know you've heard others say this. Sometimes I wish she didn't love me so much, you know. <laughs> Do we love people enough to tell them the truth? Do you know who your true friends are? Let me tell you, I can tell you how to tell who your true friends really are. They see all the chinks in your armor and all the mistakes and all the weaknesses and all the shortcomings, but they love you anyway. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful that you loved us enough to lay down your life. You laid down your life in our place where we deserve to die. You took our punishment because as sinners we deserve, we were under the judgment of God. As sinners, we deserve punishment. But Lord, you took our punishment and we praise you, Lord, for your love for us. Father, we know that uh, it wasn't easy for you to turn your back on, on that cross that day that our Lord hung there in our place when you had to turn away from the sin and the shame. Oh God, I know it's not easy for the son to look and say, Father, oh Father, why have you forsaken me? And Father, we're thankful that, that you love us and you, you said you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And I pray if there are people listening tonight that have never turned their lives over to you and trusted you, who never experienced the grace, who don't have the promise of seeing you in all your glory one of these days and of sharing that glory with you. Oh Lord, they don't have that promise. They don't have that hope that even tonight as we close this service, and this message, that they will just bow their head right where they are and just say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I'm a sinner. I want to turn from my sin and I want to turn my life over to you and I want to take you as my personal savior. I want you to be my master. I want to give you my heart and my life and I trust you to save me because you said you would. And Lord, I receive you into my heart and I thank you for saving me right now. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And if I die before morning, I'm trusting you to take me to heaven. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you've decided to follow Jesus, you listen to the words of this song and get that settled right now. Amen.
suffering of the Lord, the fact that he hasn't returned yet, count the long suffering of the Lord as an opportunity to repent. I see your daddy back there, daddy. My good friend. Daniel wants me to stand up for you. in this leg. Look at that. <laughs> Got those hip flexors going, Doc. That's good. That's good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, man, this one. I've been doing them faithfully. You ask my wife. <laughs> hey, you know, one of the servers that I hope does it on record. Oh, you're recording that, you rascal. You listen. You know, when I was in rehab over at Harmony, they'd ask me every morning I'd put a ball between a rubber ball between my legs, and I'd have to do that about 45 times. I've been doing that, the balls and all. And I've been taking my hundred pound test line and put it under there and pulling those legs up and I can kick I believe I can kick that field goal out there now I got this leg straight now for the first time 
and I don't know how many years. Now see, I've been ridiculous, I know, but I want to tell you something. It works if you work it. You use it or you lose it. See, I, can't, I couldn't pull myself with this left foot before. I was doing everything with this one. And I remember, I, got, I told him that when you, I said, my doctor came over one day and said, why aren't you walking? <laughs> I can still see his face when he said that. I want to say to a lot of people when we talk about walking in the Spirit, they've heard the message so many times. Walk in the light as He is in the light. Walk in love. Walking in the Spirit. And they've heard it, they've heard that so many times, but they're still not walking. And I told the Lord, Lord, just let me live long enough that I can walk into that pulpit one more time. Now, Doc, I don't know if you remember or not, but it'll be seven years, March the 20th, since I sat in this room celebrating my 80th birthday after I got out of the hospital. Seven years. Now, you're, you're a pretty smart man. You know in the Old Testament, the number seven in the New Testament is symbolic of completion. God labored six days and rested on the seventh. Monday is the first day of a new week. And I've been praying recently, as ridiculous as you think I am, I don't care. <coughs> Lord, on my 80th birthday, I want to be able, I mean, my 87th birthday, I want to be able to walk again. Maybe not, you know, just get up and walk out, but I'd like to take a few steps. You know, two years ago, I, I was getting, I was doing great two years ago, and I, I got on the airplane over there out of the wheelchair. It will be down to the door of the plane, and I took my walker, and I just, it went over the threshold. You know, you have to step up to get at the door of the plane and step down in there. And I stepped up there and I said, I'm all right. I don't need that walker. You can put that up. And I grabbed the seat and I walked up the aisle yeah. to my seat. And I got up to preach up in Denver where I used to pastor. And I wanted to stand up so bad. But I did, I did do all these exercises. I, you know, I, I got to a point where I just plateaued, like a lot of people do spiritually. They just never get beyond that point, you know. And I preach about faith and God can do anything and put your faith in Him. And I said, Lord, you know, I would like to be a living example. Not that I'm special, but Lord, I'm so close, you know. Some mornings I just, I just get up and I think, I can walk. I started getting out of bed on the opposite side, Doc. I can roll over on my stomach and roll over both ways. I haven't been able to do that since I fell in the shower. I couldn't do it. I couldn't roll all the way over on my stomach and lift myself on my knees and my hands, you know, doing push-ups. I did it the other morning in my bed. Something popped back here in my neck. I said, boy, I got that all lined up now. <laughs> you know, we just need to get lined up with God's will. You know, everything I preach turns to a sermon. Every, everything that God's done in my life is an illustration of what I've been trying to preach all my life. If we walk in the Spirit, Paul said, now listen to you guys in recovery, listen to this. Walk in the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Now the word lust in the Greek is the over desire for something. We're not to lust after evil things. See, and the reason we're in the predicament some of us are in is because we haven't learned to just say, Lord, I'm not I'm not going to move an inch until you help me to understand that you can do this for me. And I want to give you all the glory and the praise. That's why I'm reluctant to do anything in front of folks now because I know they think, you know, that I'm just trying to show off or whatever. And I don't want to fall, I'll tell you that. God knows that. If I have any fear at all, it's doing what so many people do and get up and break a hip or break a leg or whatever. <laughs> Somebody's waving at me. Y'all forgive me on TV, all right? She's still watching. I know some of you are going through great trials. You know, I, I want to have special prayer again for John Zenicola. He needs a job. And uh, let's just pray for John right now, okay? For these folks that are watching from the Philippines and so forth. Father, we come tonight in faith believing that all things are possible to them that believe. Now, Father, we... Uh, we rejoice in all that we've learned through these years, but we're still learning. Lord, I'm still learning. I'm learning the importance physically of physical exercise. And I've been preaching about spiritual exercise, like Paul said in the New Testament. And Father, we pray that each one of us whether we call it the 12-step program or whatever it is, that will continue to walk in what we've already learned until we get to the place <clears throat> where we know that Jesus is ready to fulfill all of his promises to us if we'll just take him at his word and trust him. Thank you for the service tonight, Lord. Thank you for Dr. Minkus, for his friendship, for Daniel, who's recorded all these messages and the services and the songs and the hymns. Made it all possible, Lord, because one day he had a vision in his own heart that we need to get the message out to more people. So we trust you to bless this message tonight to your honor and glory. And we ask it all now to pray for for our brother friend over here, John. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you'll open a door that he's not expecting. Something, Lord, he, he does need a miracle, so to speak. <clears throat> but I know you promised to supply all of our needs according to riches and glory. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. The wealth in every mine is yours. So we ask you tonight, Lord, I know he loves you. I know he knows you. He has a desire to honor you, to minister to others, to lead others to a greater knowledge of your word and of your truth. So bless him, not because he's worthy, but because he's your son. He's your child. <laughs> and bless him, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. 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 All right, friends. Bring somebody with you next week. Thank you. Yeah, okay, buddy.
Well, I know you do. 